Her name is Mary Collis Gregory Jewett. Collis was my mother's maiden name. My brother was two years younger than my sister. He couldn't pronounce Collis, so he said Polly. And I just do not know how it carried her whole life. <laughs> Mary Collis Gregory was born in 1908 and grew up in Decatur, Georgia. And she went to Agnes Scott two years, and then uh, we lived in Decatur at the time, close to Agnes Scott. And so she went as a day student, and then she went to Georgia. You know, back then, a lot of women probably didn't graduate from college and even go to college and then have a career like she had. Mary Gregory graduated from the University of Georgia in 1930 and became an outstanding leader in historic preservation in Georgia. She married and had one son, George. She was a stay-at-home mom until I was about 15 years old, which was halfway through high school. She seemed to be interested, like my daddy, in journalism and keep the history of Georgia and, and uh, save the things that we had. My grandfather was actually the director of the Historical Commission at that point in time. He had been appointed by Herman Talmadge. And so she went to work for him, worked for him for about five years. Then when he retired, she was promoted to the director of the Historical Commission. That's all they ever cared about. They didn't have hobbies. They enjoyed this, and so that's what they did. I worked for Mary from 64 to 74. That was the old Georgia Historical Commission, which no longer exists. And there's quite a, a, a saga about how Jimmy Carter, as governor, uh, reorganized state government. The creation of the Georgia Trust for Historic Preservation was announced at the 1973 conference held in Macon. The organization's first president was Mary Gregory Jewett, an organizing force behind the founding of the Trust. Mary Jewett and Marguerite and I, in lots of ways, founded the Georgia Trust. She would travel the state at first through the state organization, and then she was a charter member of the Georgia Trust of Historic Preservation. In fact, one of the first leaders in the 70s. The Georgia Trust was formed by a small group who were passionate about preserving the state's historic built environment and saw a need for a nonprofit organization that could focus on a statewide effort to preserve it. But part of the deal, and I'm not sure that anyone much even knows this, it was a, a membership organization, the new thing, the Georgia Trust. It was actually incorporated in 73. Mary died in 76, so she was only head of that for uh, three years, more or less. During the Trust's charter year, the young organization grew to over 1,000 members due to a successful drive led by Marguerite Williams. But she and the co-founders almost right out of the box got a thousand members and very shortly after she died why I read that it was the largest organization in the country of of its type. She was connected with Marguerite Williams and uh, the families in Savannah who had the financial wherewithal and she had the background with state government so she was uh, for me, kind of a heroine. That's Mary Jewett. That's Marguerite Williams. There's Jimmy Carter. There is yours truly, looking very young. And he was declaring it uh, Historic Preservation Week in Georgia, 1971. Georgia Historical Society, the local historical societies, and, and we all benefited from it. And I felt like I was sort of in on the birth of a lot of that by knowing Miss Jewett. She had a love for history, but, I mean, also it was a job. She wasn't doing it for a legacy. I mean, she was doing it to help support her family. My husband was a president of the Gainesville Historical Society. He picked out 10 houses that uh, he wanted to save. My sister was head of the commission, and so she came up, why don't you save all the houses? <laughs> I'm very thankful now for what Polly has done, and probably didn't appreciate it way back when, but now I do. At that time, uh, any woman who achieved anything was uh, unusual. If you read the things by Margaret Shannon and Jim Morrison, why they refer to the fact that 
in dealing with the state legislature and things while she was about the only woman doing it at that time. Mary Jewett uh, died in 76. She had cancer. She invited me to come to, to have dinner with her. She made dinner for us in, in her apartment out in Decatur. And as I was leaving, Mary said to me, uh, she said, Bill, you know, I have cancer. And she was no longer living about a month later. I think the legacy of leadership is fragile and that without programs like Women of Achievement, it's just forgotten. And I'm proud that, you know, what she did, you know, just for our family. I mean, she did it for so many people.